gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. What if, what if, what? What? <laughs> what? 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 That's a serious question. What if he can wait? What if he can wait? What if he like, I ain't ready to play right now? Yeah. Nah. Matter of fact, whatever team your son playing on, we're going to play for it. Let's get into play that real some. quick. Hey, uh, Showtime, Sean P. And with two T's. Let's get into that real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, We both have football backgrounds. We both mm -hmm. have hard, quote unquote, hard upbringings, fathers. Um, who were very stern, very uh, structured. My dad, uh, my dad was heartless, man. You know, your dad was just heartless. My dad had structure. <laughs> they was, yeah, you right. Hey, you right. Hey, shout out to my dad. I never heard nobody break it down like that. Right. Hey, my dad passed away. Dad my dad had no structure. He, but it was, he just had rhyme. He be had at, no reason. Be, be up at five in the morning. For what? <laughs> Figure out something. Oh, hold on. Shout out to your dad, yeah, man. So he Come would on. have you up at five. Because I know you told me the yeah. story. He would have you up at five, but for no, no like no, oh, go he had the rhyme, something. but no go reason. Go figure out something to do, yeah. He had nothing for you yeah. to do. So that being said, of course, <laughs> me me as a parent, I have a six-year-old, um, three-year-old, and, and a newborn at the house, the three-year-old almost four. So my thing is, I want with my kid what I didn't get. So I, yeah. I'm I'm very quick to talk to my kids, yeah. and I'm very quick to make sure that I want my kids comfortable talking to me. I, and yeah, I know your yeah, boy, he yeah. only he just turned three. Uh, and he's two. Just turned two. Yeah. God dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just turned two. So you know what I mean? Like that's my. But yo, th what but you, you gotta give me the real though, because if y'all go back in like an episode or two, Ant was talking about how how you allow cussing in your house to to us <laughs> to. to a, <laughs> I didn't say no, not not, the, not him and the mom, not me and the mom. No, like no, we no. watching something. It say about five cuss words. I'm like, okay, that's too much. Yeah, let's turn it off. Yeah. Okay, so but then nobody's just in the house, like, like you know, no, 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 hey, no, yeah, we don't, da, no, no, no. Da, yeah. Like now, nah, I used to play video games. I used to cuss, and I'd be like, dang, man. So, uh, oh, it's you, Sean. I don't uh, even know what that say. So there's a there's a reflection on the way. Your your mic is rubbing all all on yeah. the oh, shirt. Put it on the work. outside. That's there you new. go. Maybe. I could have did it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, no, no. There's no cussing around him. I don't allow that. But if we, you know, TV's on. Most time, he's not paying attention. Uh, Ninety percent of the time, we watching what he want to watch. Of course. That's the other thing. Of course. Uh, so let's get to it though. Until uh -huh. we got a we got a guest coming on. that's going to join us for a majority of the show. And he's all about this kid the too. Entire show. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll get yeah. his perspective as well. To the to the point of, I'm training. Kids on Saturdays, yeah. and I go to the to the workout sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they always want to know where's your six year old. He oh, don't want the box, oh, and my okay. thing is, listen, I give him another year or two before, and if he's not into something, come on, Dave, we gotta go to the gym. We gotta we gotta yeah. do something. You know what I mean? And if anything, you know, maybe spark some sort of interest. But for the most part, I'm not really interested in forcing my kids to do things. Not that my dad, I don't want to go on record too, not that my dad ever forced me to box, but mm -hmm. just I'm not going to say, here, do this. This is this mm -hmm. is what you're going to do. You know what I mean? But for you. No, no, no. The, the football is not a force thing. If you if we, if we you're serious about it, when we start something, we don't finish it. So if we if we going, we going, baby. Ain't no quitting. This I think, like again, like our, our situations are a little... Because I can't even make that ex that excuse for any other athletes whose sons don't play sport. But for the sake of words, my wife's an athlete, so yeah. our boys have they're gonna have yeah. coordination and athleticism. Yeah. The list goes on. So do something with it. You know your boy gonna be big. Yeah. So it's like I already know no, your mom yeah. says you not you, you not gonna be big this. for no reason. Yeah, you can't waste this. <laughs> Shout out to your uncle. Your but uncle, what if he your uncle what seven if he foot. Just, he over here Fisher. <laughs> Shout out to my brother. What if he wasted though? Uh, I mean, if he wasted. Just be be some production. Be productive to uh to life. To life, to man. The world. Look, yeah. look. I mean, look at his dad. Uh, shout out to Naeem. Look at his dad. I mean, I own a plumbing company. I know. I people's like, maybe you can give it to your son. Oh, he ain't gonna want to do that. You. Oh, shout that. out to you. <laughs> yeah, he, just, he ain't gonna want to do that. Yeah. So, uh, just I mean, just, whatever you do, we doing it. We do it hundred percent. Turn it ten percent. Yeah. I think where you coming from is we want we want to be like our parents, but with structure. Hard, but at the same time, love. Yes, sir. Because it was hard, hard, hard. Like I, I tell people all the time, I, my dad told me he loved me on his death grip. I'm like, yeah. all these years. Yeah. I mean, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Once I was like 20, 20 30, I get what you was doing. Yeah. But yeah. 
He ain't, he ain't know what he's doing. My thing is, and then we'll get Naeem on, but my thing mm-hmm. is, I, I, I'm not letting you make any decision on your own. And mm-hmm. this is why I just told Diggy, six-year-old the other day, like, you're, you're learning how to make decisions. Mm-hmm. I'm teaching you how to make decisions. At some point, you're going to want to make decisions on your own, but that's not happening now. Sure. And I think that that's kind of the separation with the generations. I think... Our generation, mm-hmm. when we were growing up, our parents, they kind of learned from their parents. And their mm-hmm. parents were so, you know, by the yeah. book and, you know, list goes on. I think, you know, the le- the the leniency that we wanted, yeah. you know, I think that we, we were definitely find our way with our kids. But uh, yeah. nonetheless, I'll tell you, like, reason why that, that kind of brought in, that was brought into this episode was, <laughs> I'm looking at you and I'm like, I know how big your child is going to be. Yeah. And you hyped about him playing football yeah. at seven, eight years old. Yeah. But not just football. Oh, we're doing something. Ta- we're doing tackle something. football no, no, at seven, tackle eight years at 10. old. Tackle at 10. Oh, 10? Yeah. We, we, yeah we, I started at eight. Nah, come on, man. I got, if I got to be a little soft. He ain't going to the, he ain't gonna make the weight limit. No. He, so there's yo, that's that. That's the other thing. <laughs> so there's and that. we had hunting. <laughs> okay. All, you, all y'all little kids out there, I can't head hunting. You can't, you, can, you can't, they can't kick him out the game until what, in high school, the college? I don't so know. So we're going to take advantage of it, baby. We had hunting. I, yo, listen, I was hey, too smooth. Hey, I ain't got to worry about a CTE. I'll be gone by then. Oh, man. We just get, he get cash, baby. With that, with that, <laughs> at some point, we always get to death with, with Ant with two Ts. But, yo, let's bring in Naeem Lynn, um, world renowned comedian, uh, great friend of the podcast. Hey, another another person that's all about his kid. I, I give Naeem props. You know, you know, I am, Sean. We on the road. I'm like, Sean, I got to get home. I'm FaceTiming my kid. My man, a hey, shout out to him, man. I, I respect dads like that. My man's all about his daughter. Loves his daughter. And I respect that. My man be about to, I gotta make time to get to my daughter. Like my son has first swimming class. Shout out to me, you know. I just <laughs> I had to get up. I'm the only black parent up in there in the water. I know they probably think I couldn't swim. I had to show them. You had the tank top on? Yeah, the wife beat no, up. No, no, no. I just had my t-shirt yeah, on. It's a, it's a, I had my water, water shirt on. Oh, okay. Don't play me, don't play me. Okay. But uh I try to make I'm trying to make it to stuff like that because, you know, our parents, I don't know how naive parents was, but they felt like, uh, whatever. Nah, uh, talk to us real quick. We kind of this episode going. We gonna start about, about family. Yeah, with the, we gonna start about parenting with this episode. But kind of you know talk to us. Why is being there for your daughter? Like, how are you so conscious to you know being there for your daughter? Well, first I want to tell Aunt that I love him since ain't nobody told him his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. It's I appreciate right. it, man. Yeah, it, it's actually it's overrated when you hear it every day. You know, it don't mean nothing to you. Oh, oh for real? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he said... <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. He like, uh, okay, all right, cool. He said, you ain't missing that. That's yeah. silly. Okay. It's, you know, it, it's, if you, it's, if you hear it every day, it doesn't mean nothing. If you hear it sometimes, and it probably, like in important times, it probably means the most. Uh-huh. But for me, it was normal. So, uh, you know, I don't want you to feel bad about not hearing it till, till he dies. <laughs> Well, forget that fool. He forget that fool. We living good now. He left. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, to answer your question, man, my daughter is everything to me. Um, I waited a, a long time before I had a child. I had my daughter at thirty-seven, mm-hmm. and um, you know, she's a blessing, bro. For a person like me who deals with depression and all that stuff, she really gives me something to smile about every day. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I just I love her as hard as I can. I just I just walked in the house a little while ago. Um, from being on the road, I came in, I made breakfast immediately, and now I'm here with you guys. But yeah, I must spend a lot of time with it this week. I'm about to be going for like four weeks. Okay, that's what's happening. Let's get yeah. to this boxing thing, man. I know uh, uh, our, our our audience sometimes they get a little they get a little impatient. They want to get right to the boxing. Um, go ahead. Hey, Naeem, we're gonna we're gonna change it up a little bit. Hey, man, uh, we 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 got we got something, Hafey. This, this is where we're going. We got something. We got something today. Okay. We got something today, man. Get to it. You know, we got a <laughs> we got we got a guy, man. Third he was 31 and 4 with, with one draw. Uh he had a 55% KO percentage. Hmm. Uh let's see. What, what else? He was two and one in Vegas. <laughs> My man going into the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Oh. <laughs> Sean Porter. Made it in there. Nah, nah, hey, nah, like you knocked somebody out once? <laughs> Nigga, I don't remember. <laughs> nah, he had a lot of knockouts. I mean, 
At least 30% nigga, when? Of from, a, from a headbutt. Bro. What? Well, what'd you knock out? <laughs> what'd you knock out? Knock it. Oh, okay. Head. My bad. My bad. Nah, uh... Brad, Sean, I, I ain't even know that. I'm like, who is, whose record is he talking about? Uh, I, yeah, I didn't know he was talking about me till I caught the, the, uh, the record. But, uh, yeah, there was an official announcement, I think on Friday, yeah. uh, the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame uh, had uh, nominated me this year and um, first Battle Hall of Famer. So I'm, I'm definitely uh, um, elated and, uh, and appreciative uh, for the honor. Of being that's inducted huge, into man. Hall of Fame. Yeah. Is there like an international one or is it just the Nevada? <clears throat> this is Nevada one. The Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Um, I know that one of the criteria, the part of the criteria to get into the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame is you have to have had a number of fights here or a number mm-hmm. of rounds. I think okay. must I think have been rounds because you think, had three fights. I think it's number of rounds uh, boxed in in Las Vegas or in Nevada, um, but it is. Technically, a, a uh, international uh, Hall of Fame. It's been around. I think this is year six for it. Year six or year seven. I've been here for ten years, so this might be like year eight or nine for them. And who else is going in with you? Um, at, right off the top, I don't know anybody else that's going in with me. Right off of the top, um, you might be the first one announced. Um, I don't know who else is going in right off the top. But Man, uh, the uh, the um, Hall of Fame, uh, I think it's in September. Yeah, like on, August. on a grade it's of August. on a grade of uh, on a grade system A through A through F. What do you give yourself and your accomplishments in your career? How proud of you? Are, how proud of you are are you of you of yourself? Um, as a professional. Mm-hmm. I would say, man, that's a you know what? That's a really tough question because. Um, as a professional boxer, I really didn't have the goals or aspirations that a lot of a lot of other boxers have turning pro. So I really I kind of I, I, I overachieved in some in some in some ways um, mm-hmm. based on what my goals were as a professional boxer. Um, you know that all that being said, I, I think as a as a professional fighter. Looking at other fighters, I really, I've had people tell me that I'm getting into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I'm like, man, I don't know if I get in, I get in. I, I feel like I haven't done as much as a lot of other professional boxers, maybe B, maybe mid B, in terms mm-hmm. of what I feel I've accomplished to be into the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah. So, you know, with that being said, I'm, I'm definitely... It takes me looking at the fights, and I think that that's what has gotten me into the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah. When you when you when you take away the accolades, because I'm only a two time world champion with only with both times winning the belt, one successful defense, and then losing the very next defense. Both times I was a world champion, but when you look at the fights as a whole, it's like they were they were they become like really iconic performances on both sides of the ring, of course. But I think. Um, that along with my style, which is a style that you really just don't see very mm-hmm. often, it's very fan friendly, like Ant just said, and I think that um, it's a style that a lot of others will achieve, will, will try to emulate moving forward. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, your resume is is great. Like we discussed before, all your losses came to undefeated fighters at the time, right? Wow. Yeah. Uh, and um, wow. And, 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 <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. And you were a two-time champ in a boxing era that is can go down as one of the best eras of all time. Yeah. So, wow. you know, don't sell yourself short, bro. I, yeah. I think uh, you celebrate yourself. Sometimes to take another person to help you realize what you've done. But a lot of times we do things in life and we're not proud of ourselves because... We aspire to do so much more. Yeah. You got to celebrate those victories. And going into the Hall of Fame is huge, man. So yeah. congratulations. Yeah, man. Thank you. Maybe I will finally do uh, a, a retirement party that week. So we'll see. And yeah, you know me, man. Uh, you fought like Naeem said. You fought them all. I mean, I don't know if we ever get a guy that just was fighting everybody. Yeah. You you think, I think, <clears throat> I'm, I don't know your business, but I'm pretty sure you probably lost money just saying, F the business. Let's fight. 
Probably. Let's fight. Yeah. That, I was mean, your, that was your mentality. The thing you see now is a lot of fighters that will push back and they want yeah. the, per, the percentage to be right and all this and that. And yeah. um, I definitely feel like if they're, they're probably, in retrospect, there yeah. were probably a, a handful of fights that we could have waited an yeah. extra week, you know, and, yeah. and things like that. So, but that really wasn't my MO, man. My thing was getting the ring, the money's going to be the money. And uh, you do what you got to do, and and everything will increase. And I I even think that at this point, being retired now, for uh, it'll be it'll be three years this year in September or in November. It'll be three years. I feel like my profile has still entire it continued yeah. to increase. So, and you know, the proudest moment I ever was was when you won the WBC title because I know how how important that title was for you. Yeah, and that, you know that's the title when yeah. you come to boxing. I yeah. know how much you went through. Yeah. In the ring, outside the ring, in that yeah. moment, and to come through and get the world title. Yeah, that was one of the most proud I ever been with of you. You know, yeah, probably yeah, yeah. all time, but yeah, stuff yeah. like that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. you never got washed. You every fight you lost, you was in it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, and, I, and people get washed. <laughs> That's not. Yeah, man. That ain't that ain't in my DNA, man. Getting so, washed. Yeah, so you know, I think <laughs> saying all that to kind of bring it back to the kids, you know, what I mean, I yeah. think the number one thing for us is our kids don't get washed in life, you know. It's, <laughs> hey, that's you know, a good so one. That's a good one. That's bro. that's the number one, you know, like kind of yeah to bring it all the way back. <laughs> at the end of the day, pick what you want to do. You got to do something, but whatever yeah. it is you're doing, be successful in yeah. it, and you know, don't don't accept anything less. So appreciate you, Naeem. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, we we had to show you some love, man, for the show start. Listen, so I brought I I wanted you to come on now because we were kind of we were having a little bit of a back and forth before the main event started this past Friday, and mm -hmm. um I ended up posting that conversation. The only reason being was I do round by round mm -hmm. scores. I I, I kind of get my commentary out, you know that that whole thing, and I we we didn't have very much to. To, to to get into uh, as the main event was going on. And so I was like, you know what? Let me get Naeem to come on. Let me get his perspective on not only the main event, not uh, um, Nganu and Joshua this past weekend, but a couple of fights moving forward as well. We we, we kind of been communicating a little bit more this weekend too. So um, let me get your thoughts on Joseph Parker in the fight with with, uh, with, with Big Bang, but, it, but even moving forward for, 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 for Parker. Man, Parker looked great. You he know, did. he got he got sat down twice, and uh, you can see he was hurt, but he got back up and he figured it out. Um, the funny thing is, after Parker fought Joshua, Big Bang was talking shit like, "Yeah, I, I mean, not Joshua after fought Wilder." Yeah. He was like, "Man, I, I wasn't impressed with either one of them. You know, <laughs> none. Of, I, I didn't see nothing." And then he went in there and he he got a boxing lesson. And then had to he had the nerve to react like he should have won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. he had two knockdowns now. That's it. What but else did I, he do? <laughs> yeah, he got washed every other round. He put, look, he he boxed circles around him, man. Parker looked good. Yeah. He looked good. And he could just you know, how old is he? Is he in late thirties? Uh yeah, somewhere around there. I know, um, I know Big Bang is is forty, and I kind of yeah. wanted to bring that up as well. We always say that the heavyweights they they age later than any other weight class. Um, thirty two, and and Joseph Parker is thirty two. In his prime, but it's just I felt like I saw we saw age uh, on Friday night uh, on the side of Big Big Bang. It, I mean, I honestly I've, I've only seen him fight like twice, so oh. I can't say if it was an age thing from from what I've seen. I just seen a guy. That would just—he just got outclassed, you know. Big Bang, wait—he's waiting for that Big Bang, <laughs> and uh, you know sometimes people don't get up from it. But Parker, he—he he stood in there like a champ, and that's two big wins for him. Yeah. yeah. So he need to be like—he need to be like second or third in the division right now. Yeah. Gili um, has that's really good boxing style. He can—he can—he can punch in combination, uses mm -hmm. his jab. It just there wasn't a lot coming from him the other night, and that's why I said, man, I think it's his age. But for someone who has not watched um, Gili, I, someone who has myself, I thought he was gonna do get the job done, and especially after the first knockdown, it was all right, yeah. cool. It's only a matter of time before his work rate does increase, and he mm -hmm. and he does what he what he 
what I've known him to do in the past, and um, just didn't see it uh, on fight night from him. I think it's a. I think he's about done. I don't. I really. You know. You. He's got two losses now, I believe, um, and they're both like lackluster performances. They're they're not what he didn't get washed yeah. and and lost like he he just looked very ordinary and lost now twice. And even though he was on a winning streak, a, a, a really good winning streak, nonetheless, I think he's about done. I think Bang is about done. You think that. You think he's going to retire? Or you think that he just don't have a future? I think that he doesn't have a future. I think that he's going to be now looked at as the B side, as the the gatekeeper of, of the the heavyweight division. I think he'll beat Joshua. Ooh, see, really? I think he'll beat Joshua. Damn. Mm. Okay. Because you, you talking see, about Big Bang, right? Yeah. You talking about Anthony Joshua? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Because. Joseph Parker moved around a lot. He was moving. He was, yeah. you know, just was. He was. It was a great boxing exhibition. Absolutely. And I think that Anthony Joshua is a little bit more. You know, he he doesn't move as much, and he got some power, but we know his chin is suspect. And I yeah. think if he fought somebody like him, he would lose. I think Big Bang could beat Joshua. Okay. Even though Joshua, I mean, he looked good, but he looked good, good against somebody he was supposed to look good against. So Zeely needs somebody in front of him. Which makes a lot of sense, jo and and again to your point, Joseph Parker is not an easy, he he's not yeah, an easy he's, night. Yeah. He a lot of movement, and I love what Andy Lee is doing with him too. A lot of feints. That's yeah. something that it's a lost art in boxing. You don't see a lot of fighters fainting. And basically, mm -hmm. what that does is that keeps the opposition off balance, off rhythm, off tempo. And you know, I mean, I I thought to your point, Joseph Parker like just met. Top to bottom, yeah. magnificent. And uh, and Joseph Parker also spends time uh, sparring with uh, Tyson Fury. With Fury, he's been yeah. training with Fury for the last two or three years. Yeah, but yeah. he says, Joshua, I want to see Wilder and Big Bang. Somebody gets banged that night. Ooh, I, I think I think Wilder might get knocked out. Ooh, that, that is... <laughs> you think Literally. Wilder would get knocked out by by Zone? So, uh, somebody get knocked out. That's all I gotta say. And Look. I, it's a it, somebody getting knocked out. Wilder, I think he would have a hard time knocking Big Bang out. He, you see, he got a chin. You know, he was eating all those. I don't, I don't know what Joseph Parker's punching power is like, mm -hmm. but he was eating all those punches. And Deontay Wilder, now he may be done. And I love Wilder, but you know, after that ayahuasca, you know, it, 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 he just in a different mind frame right now. Yeah. And he said, that. he said, he's like, man, I'm gonna get home to my baby. He was smiling after he lost. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be over for him. Uh, yeah, Wild. I just wish Wilder get back to Wilder, man. You know, I actually the other night I watched Burn, the Stavern fight. Oh wow, he that was Two. the best he. No, the oh, first one. 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 That was the best he ever looked boxing, and he was right. just he was just kind of doing his thing. Shout out to Malik Scott. I think he's giving him more than he can actually do right now. Mm -hmm. Malik Scott is an elite, a pretty good trainer. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Wilder has that in his rep. He's just a knockout artist. Mm. Just let Malik, Wilder be Wilder. Malik Scott took a dive. I can't respect that, brother. Ooh, See, I, that's my guy. He, he on record. He on. That's the record. He said he took. He didn't say it. Oh, okay. come you know, on, y'all. Y'all, you can you can rewind that tape a lot of times, he did not get and hit. it looks okay. Very bad. Okay, he did have his hands up like this, <laughs> but let Wilder hit you like that. <laughs> hey, if if Wilder hit me on the gloves. And I, my hands are wrapped. I'm sure it would hurt my hands. But I, I know I would be able to get up if he didn't hit my face. Now, hey, y'all got this replay in my head because he, like, flew back. Remember he, yeah, like, he, I remember like, the hit. he like, late. I late remember. Down. But why would he take That's a, my guy. We got to no, no, move no, no. away from yeah, that. Yeah, me, that's my guy, too. I can't do that now. That's like somebody talking about you. I can't co-sign that. But he took a dive in that fight. I, and, and then you come train the dude that you took a dive from. But hold up, though. Let's get back to it, though. Joseph Parker, who you want to see him <laughs> in the ring with? Uh, I'd like to see him, I think, so Fury and, and uh, Usyk are about to fight, and I think maybe Joshua and Parker should fight, and then the winner yeah. fights the winner. This will be a rematch, because they did fight, fight once before, and uh, Joshua was able to get the victory. I'm not sure if it was by a stoppage or not, but I know he beat him well, last time. 
I it's, mean, if, if Usyk wins, then Joshua's going. He said he wanted to win it. That'll be his third fight with him. Right. So, right. Know, that don't really matter. But I think Joseph Parker is he's ready for a title title shot. I mean, actually, he probably deserves the winner more than Anthony Joshua does. He he and nah, I he's actually the uh, number one contender for the WBO title, which Usyk has. He's the interim champion right now, so he's okay. a, he's in waiting. Yeah, I think he's he he deserves the winner. Yeah, of Usyk and Fury, and we we've never seen him against either. So, um, I think that 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 makes the most sense. All respect to Anthony Joshua, especially what he just did on on, on Friday night, and I know he had another big win against uh, Otto Wileen before that. Um, but when you've been in the ring with one guy twice, and we've seen you come up extremely short twice. We're really not interested, especially when we don't... What you think about... Here, before we uh, before we do Joshua and Gondo, what do you think about Fury and, and Usyk? Man, that's tough. Um, that's a tough pick fight, man. Yeah, you know, I think the height... The height could play a, a difference. Could play like, you know... it could. I would take Fury... If he looks good, because he looked bad against Ngannou. So yeah. if he comes out and he's ready, I will pick him because of the... The height difference, like like not not I say I think he can use his size and put it, yeah. put a pressure on him all night long. Yeah, and he can box. It's not a lot of fighters in the in the world that know how to use the advantage that they have. A lot of I fighters know. give away. There's a clear advantage in the size uh. between these two men, and I think that Tyson Fury knows how to use it to his advantage. Is the only truly. The only reason that makes me comfortable to say I think Tyson Fury will win it. Outside of that, the work rate of Usyk, the the um the the mind the mindset of Usyk, this like no quit attitude. The I mean the whole nine. I feel like Usyk got everything it takes to beat Fury. I just I'm like round by round that size. Mm -hmm. I don't think Fury. I don't think we see a knockout in this fight. Nah. I think he goes to the scorecards, but I feel like Tyson Fury is going to be able to control control mm -hmm. it enough to win the fight. And on top of that, I think it'll be a good fight, which wherever way the decision goes, I think it'll make sense. I don't think this one is going to be a hard... It's not going to be a hard fight to score. Okay. Usyk, Usyk fights aren't really hard to score. Like, he score, when he scores, he scores. And, yeah. you know, so I think, you know, if he's not scoring, we'll see that. And if he's getting scored on, we'll see that as well. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a hard fight to to really manage in terms of the, who's winning round by round. I don't like this two-fight deal thing. Me neither. I don't like that. Um, I feel like, you know, if it's a close fight, then you know, you still, it's up to the boxers. But if it's a close fight, then yeah, run it back. But if somebody gets dominated like, you know, Spence and Crawford, I, I hate that. So you want to see that. But if you're a fan, you want to see that boxer move on to something else. Well, yeah, when you go back to Big Bang and Joseph Parker, Parker mm -hmm. said right after the fight, we're running it right back. And it's like, dang, we, we, I think we, we got a really good first fight. I think we'll get a similar second fight, but you're right. Like they're running it right back. While we talking about one fighter moving on, it's like, we're going to get the same thing again, unless somebody says, you know, moves away, moves, you know, get that step aside money or something like that. Yeah. So then what about what about uh Joshua and Ngannou, man? I think when the fight started, I think we both, you know, we made we made our picks. But yeah. I think what was y'all picks? He picked the winner. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I didn't pick I didn't pick the winner. So because of how the success Ngannou had against Fury, mm -hmm. uh and and me feeling like Anthony Joshua sometimes his boxing skills skills are, are limited. I thought that he would come out and have some success against him. And in, in, in the first half of that first round, he was doing good. He kept landing the left hook. Sean said he going to hit it. You said a, a right. Uh, you said a, a left hook, right, I, right. I saw something in in uh, in Ganu's game, and mm -hmm. I said, I said Joshua's going to throw a lead left hook and then a right hand, and it's going to set Ganu down. And not long after that, it was just a straight right hand. He pawed with the jab and then threw the straight right hand. And it came right down the middle and and, and sat down uh and got him. And then after that, he was done because he was he was scared then. You yeah. See, like he was over every faint. He was like, he was too cautious. Yeah. I think he was shook after the knockdown. 
And mm-hmm. I, I tried to narrate this a little bit about the fight between uh, I always I hate to always go back to this one, but Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence. I was what I was trying to narrate is like when you get knocked down, there's a lot of different things going on. Especially if you've never been knocked down before. The, the, the best of my knowledge, Nganu has never really been in that yeah. position. When you've yeah. never been in that position, it's like a lot is going on mentally. You realizing that the whole crowd just seen it. You realizing like, damn, I, how did I just get knocked down? Embarrassment. It's embarrassment. That's number one. You're a little shook. And then on top of that, you know your other guy, you don't know if he think you hurt. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot that goes in through your mind in a matter of seconds when you get knocked down. And so I think that the number one thing a fighter may need to get beyond is the sense, is is that 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 question mark. It's a big ass question mark in your face. Did that just happen? <laughs> you know? And so I feel like that question mark was in Nganu's face as the round ended and then coming into the second round too. Yeah, he <laughs> he looked he looked at him after he got knocked down That's like, oh, this, oh, he real. Yeah, yeah. He real. Have you ever been knocked down and didn't have your legs when you got up? Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> have you ever been knocked down and didn't have your legs when you got up? Yeah, yeah. I told you, some more dude. Damn. <laughs> yeah, some more dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't had your hey, legs? Don't fight some more. No. What, it, what it feel like? Oh, no, I ain't have... Chill out. I ain't say that. I ain't meant that. I ain't meant that side of it. What would it feel like? I didn't. I don't remember that side. You of it. know I you. Say say that side oh, you don't remember. I don't remember. I ain't <laughs> that side. You didn't of it, get okay? checked out. <laughs> nah, shut the hell up. Okay. Listen, the the clothes though, the, the way the clothes oh, after okay. the second knockdown, and it's always like you you you. It's two things as an outside as an outsider looking at what's going on in the ring. You could be looking at one guy. Wondering if he's good. And as he's getting up, you looking at the other guy wondering if he knows the other guy ain't good. Yeah. You look at the body energy. And I didn't get this, this excitement from, from Joshua like, I'm about to close the show. But then my man steps in and just goes overhand right and, and it's done. I mean, that was the oh. cleanest. That was beautiful, bro. Yeah, that was a big right, and, and he just he just folded him like a like a, one of them lawn chairs at the uh, on the boat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now uh, he did what Tyson Fury was supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't play with his food. Yeah, it was nice and quick, two rounds. Uh, shout out, shout out to t- uh, Joshua. I didn't see him doing this at all. You would said Joshua gonna knock him out in two? Hell no! From the Joshua I've been seeing for the last. There were two or three years ever since he got knocked out. No, nah, I didn't see this coming. So Otto Wiley didn't give you a he, that Hell fight didn't no. give you enough to say, yo, this is gonna be a good, this is gonna be a back and forth anything. Well, now yeah, I go. Nah. No, no. Uh, you know what pissed me off about Joshua? It's his, <laughs> po- his post fight, his post fight speeches. They pissed me off. He gotta take the mic out of the guy's hand. He gotta walk around, thank the world. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> He did that? He took it out. He always does that. He got to thank the whole world. Even when he got knocked out, he did it. Thank the Gundans who came out. (laughs) Hey, Josh, Josh from Lee Scott going to beat your ass. (laughs) (laughs) And you got a gym. Make us just going to pull up one day. (laughs) But but this is what people do. Dan Raphael and... And Skip Bayless and anybody else, they talk shit. Why can't I talk hey, shit? Hey, nah, I say the same thing. The box we want to whip my ass all the time. I'm like, man. So it is what, what it is. What part of being the journalist is. I'm going to whip Stephen A. Smith ass when I see him. So it's okay. They been, how long? Hey, man, y'all, you know it's just Black History Month. Y'all ain't going to let that go? <laughs> you say, y'all, he don't even know who I am. <laughs> y'all ain't never met. Nah, I seen him. I seen him at. Um, I've seen him a couple times. I saw him at Mastros, uh, in November, and um, I was there. You know, it was my wife's birthday dinner, so I was I was cool. Oh, but okay. If I was by myself. I'd have stepped to him. <laughs> hey, 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 what well, Stevie A. Smith would have whooped your ass in Mastros? I would hope nobody's recording it. <laughs> you ready for that kind of that kind of conflict? <laughs> that ain't nothing but like that's. Verbal conflict right there. That's all you're going to get from Stephen A. And they both can talk. You keep up with that? Nah, man. You start using them big words, then, you know, I got to I gotta step off. I don't like... I just don't like them. 
Man, he nah, it goes farther than that. He has a song for him called <laughs> Look at the Coon. <laughs> no, you don't. I swear to God. <laughs> Why do you think he laughs like that? He, he, he about to go play. He it. looking for the demo tape. <laughs> hey, he, he, he looking for the demo song. Thing. I don't know how long I've been listening to their show. He every time they bring him up, he killing him with this song. I never even heard the song until I heard until I started watching their show. Just for Stephen A. Smith. This is crazy. I don't know. How, you, you, you think Stephen A. He, he working for? Nah, let me. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Deshaun, you still got you still got work to do. He got a TV show already. Okay, so no, hey, we ain't stooping to his levels. Are you about to play it? We don't hear it yet. You can't hear it. No, nah, no, nah, I can't hear it. I'll send it to you. I'll let Sean hear it. I don't think we need it. Yeah, I, I hear it off off air and, and report back, but uh, no. Nah. Nah, you tripping on uh on Jake Paul? This Jake Paul, Mike Tyson announcement. You said it wasn't gonna happen. I'm telling I you, I still don't think well, it's. That's what you told me too. Uh, yeah, you're did a I say hater. It yeah, you're a hater. I don't think it's happening. I broke it down to you now. Nah. I'll break it down to you too. Break it down listen, to the people. Listen, I'm on record too. When when his opponent was walking out to the ring, I looked in dude's face and I was like, yo, he got that face like. He know what he's supposed to do tonight. He's supposed to find somewhere on this mat to lay down, and when that perfect punch is thrown, he gonna lay down. And that's what you meant. That's exactly what I, I thought I meant. you meant. He knew how to fight. And I'm not saying from a standpoint of him throw, of him taking money to take a dive. I just saying this dude look like he know what his job is. He's supposed to find somewhere to find, to lay down on this canvas, Ooh, okay. and when that punch is thrown, he's supposed to lay down. Furthermore. And I and it could be it could be my it could be just me looking into things a little too more. I'm look I'm watching the ref while the fight is going on. I'm looking at the ref and the ref looks like he's not interested For in real? jumping and jumping in and stopping this fight because nobody likes a ref to just jump in and wave off the fight. So the ref looked like he was like he looking for. I see you getting wailed on, bro, but it's got to be a good punch for me to jump in here. And I didn't see that. Or excuse me, I didn't. You know, eventually. The ref just had to jump in and wave the fight off, right? So okay. after you move past that, it is what it is. The the whoever was in the ring interviewing him, what's next? Jake says, well, maybe something more competitive. I thought that this was gonna be competitive. I mean, the dudes 15 and one, 15 and two, I thought this was gonna be more than it was. I don't know. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't, you not five days, four days away from that right there and you ain't and you and you already know what's next and not only just what's next but this right here you gave us no feeling whatsoever that you had something exciting coming next and for somebody that built their life is built around getting people excited you didn't give us no inkling whatsoever that you was getting in the ring with mike tyson and you and you got the and you making an announcement four days after the fight that to are me don't make excited, sense though are we not excited I'm not excited, and that's why I don't think the fight happening. I think for something like this to happen, it, it takes more than four to five days to make something mm -hmm. like this happen. And what I'm saying is, I don't think that through the course of him having a fight in Puerto Rico, never mention, yeah, we're going to get this bum out of the way, and I got something real exciting for y'all after that. Never said anything like that. And then after the fight, the fight, as dry as it ended, as dry as it was, you got to do something to get us excited and get us pumped up. And you didn't know that this fight was on the horizon? I don't think this fight gets made in four or five days. Well, he, he did bring up Canelo after the fight. And he said... And on top of that, he brought up Canelo. He, he said, Mexicans versus Puerto Ricans. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I said, how do you think it... He said, I'm representing Puerto Rico now. <laughs> yeah, 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 he over there fighting in Puerto Rico, so, so you got to pay taxes. All that being said, I just don't think the fight's happening. I don't think that... Uh, I, I don't know, man. I think it's a publicity stunt. I got a question for y'all. Do you think at some point Jake will ever try to work his way up the ranks and actually fight for a real title or, you know, go towards that? I do. Yeah. I, do, I don't expect this fight to happen for that express purpose. When you're fighting that, like, I think his weight class would be 175, I no, think. No, 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 no. Uh, he's cruiser, a cruiser. He's a cruiser. cruiser work. Yeah, his, he will be a cruiser weight. Champion, I think he's trying to work his work his way up to fighting for a cruiserweight championship title. I don't think you take a fight with Mike Tyson 
whether it's for the money, the shine, the act, I don't know what it's for ex exactly, but this this fight doesn't push you forward towards a world championship title. Yeah, I mean, I like Jake. I like I like everything that he stands for, especially after watching his documentary. Um, completely different than what I expected. You know, he, he's a he's a solid dude, and he's trying to get those rights and the money and all those things for for professional fighters UFC too. So, um, I would like to see him actually work his way up the ranks. Um, I think he's gonna whip Mike Tyson ass. I do think the fight is gonna happen. Mm. And, and you think he's gonna whoop his? I th whoop his ass. Look, what? I think he's gonna whip Mike Tyson's ass. Hey, look at the coon. <laughs> here. <laughs> here, man. Come on now. Nah. <laughs> Look, man, Mike Tyson is old, bro. He's he almost 60 years old. And I know he was Iron Mike back in the day. Yeah. Talk about hot box and ayahuasca Mike right now. Mike in a different space. He looked terrible against Roy Jones. They both looked terrible. They did. They did. We yeah, know did. he still got to punch his chance. That. We know he got to punch his chance, but I, I don't think he can eat the punches. I don't think he get. I don't think he got in them. I think that. Uh, I think it's gonna be an entertaining fight, and I think Jake gonna win. Mm. If the fight does happen, I think that Jake will be fighting not to survive, but fighting to win rounds. And people don't understand boxers that box to win rounds. People understand boxers that fight, uh, go back and forth, take chances. I don't think Jake will take any chances in this fight. I think he's going to try to win rounds just to say he beat Mike Tyson, and to me, that's corny. Okay, if, if he fight Mike and he and he knocks Mike out, we need Wilder to go defend our honor. <laughs> he, he's, he's, our, he's our Wakanda right now. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want to be realistic about it, Mike, there's just too many miles on Mike. Uh, that's before you even talk he's about old. his age. Huh? He's old. Like, yeah, not, but that's yeah. before you even talk about his age, you know, and... You talk about a, a a man like Mike Tyson trying to get ready for that. And on top of that, they would probably make this a 10 round fight, something like that, just to just to make Mike go those rounds and things like that. I mean, I don't I don't see it happening. And um it's it's honestly for me, it's hard to count out Mike. Um I think Mike, if if the if the fight happens, this is this is what I'll say. The fight happens, Mike gives us three great rounds. And the fight ends. If the fight don't end in three rounds, Mike loses. Okay, let's look at Mike Tyson's last professional fight. When, when was that? 2000, what, six, 2005, something yeah, like that? Back. I think he yeah. had one later than that, though. I think he Mike. To the white boy. That was his last. last that was fight. his last one? Kevin McBride in 2005. 2005. Okay. Danny McBride in 2005. Danny. He was a number Kevin. And Mike was Ke what, Ke late thirties? Early for late thirties, early forties. Yeah. And and you talking about a Mike that was, you know, he didn't train that hard. He said he was trying to get a payday, whatever, whatever the case may be, he was done. And now you're talking about 20 years later, another white boy that's young, that's in his early twenties. I gotta be white. <laughs> what that is, white boy. <laughs> uh <laughs> I mean, he still got that old man strength, right? What if he, what if he clipped Jake in the first? I mean, he got a puncher's chance; it could happen. Yeah, but we... beside, outside of that, I don't. And I, I mean, I'm a Mike Tyson fan. If he could win, that would be a beautiful thing. It'd be great for all the old people. Yeah. Um, but I, I just don't see it happen. I look at the same thing you guys say about Keith Thurman, how he's been on this layoff and. You know, uh, you gotta you gotta fight. You gotta find your timing and things like that. You, we, we could talk about the puncher's chance that Mike clearly does have, but at the same time, you gotta respect the fact that when you haven't done it at at that level in front of people like that, the list goes on. And we even saw it with uh, Roy Jones. You don't, you don't, you just don't have the timing to have a puncher's chance. You know, so I think. <clears throat> For this fight right here with Mike, it's a matter of 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 rushing Jake, uh, reminding Jake of what he never saw. <laughs> Cause let's be real, like Jake never saw Vin, the, the the real Mike Tyson, and you remind him of everything that everybody has said about him, and you put fear in Jake's mind and put fear in Jake's heart and mind. In a matter of two two rounds, you might have some success. But outside of that, I don't see the fight happening though. I don't. I hate that we even analyzed it. 
let's not forget Jake Paul has fought against some some uh, UFC guys that have power, and he they couldn't knock him down. So I'm not saying that they got, huh? It was the same thing though. Timing. Uh, somebody yeah, did hurt him. Like, somebody buzzed him or hurt him. Uh, Ty Tyrone. Tyrone. Okay. Yeah. He, in the first fight, he did catch him with some. He almost. Yeah, he almost dropped him, but he didn't. And then he ended up getting knocked out. So you talk about young guys. <laughs> he, he almost dropped him, but he didn't. <laughs> you talking about young young guys that have power that are professional fighters. Yeah, they MMA, but they got punching power. And he was able to take those punches from guys that are, you know, 20 years younger than Mike Tyson. Yeah. I don't think it happens. Uh, Antonio Tarver wants uh, the alien Bernard Hopkins on the undercar. Are you interested in that? No, Bernard Hopkins, uh, he, he taught Tarver a lesson when they fought the first time. This is, what, 15 years later? 20, year, 20 years <laughs> later? I said the first time. They fought, look, that was a great fight by Bernard Hopkins. You know what? And I was thinking about this earlier. I feel like uh, you, Bernard Hopkins, and uh, Andre Ward, you guys kind of have uh, not similar styles, but you guys like to mix it up. You know, you're going to make rough, rough house a little bit. You know, you like it's almost a street fight. Uh -huh. And I actually admire that style, I, you know, especially um, Andre Ward. Like Andre Ward was, he always, you know, he had a punching power, but he would mix it up. He would, you know, fight a little dirty sometimes. And um, Ward was very yeah, clean with that. It. Tar, and I like Tar, but I don't think that, I don't think they should fight again. I don't think Bernard Hopkins need to be in the ring ever again after that last fight. Mm. Oh, when, when the dude pushed him out the ring? Hey. <laughs> dude pushed him out the ring. Joe Smith. With a punch. No, nah, he pushed him. Fucked up. Uh, but yeah, uh, shout out to... I'm, I'm up for it. Put it on there. Uh, let's see what happens. What the hell? Entertain me. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, hey, entertain Tarver's me. idea? Huh? This is Tarver's idea? Yeah. 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 And it will be a hell of a buildup too. They're gonna talk so more than see. ever. The buildup will probably be better than the fight. You want to see the fight? Well, listen. Um, we had Antonio Tarver in the uh, studio uh, back ago. in January, I believe it was, and um, he said he still wanted to fight, and he said that this fight specifically is the fight that's been on his mind. Um, that's the the the. Interesting that I interesting thing that I know about fighters. When we get fixated on something, and when it's something that we really want, we we do just about anything needed, necessary. And when you talk about a fighter that has been out of the ring for as long as both these guys have, when they turn it on for this moment right here, especially Antonio Tarver, we we might get a a, a performance from Antonio Tarver that we just really did not expect. Based on again him mentally tuning in and turning it all on, you know, he won his get back. That's probably his most lopsided loss. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we saw that from uh, um, Andre Berto not too long ago. He he got back in the ring yeah. against uh, Robert uh, Guerrero. Guerrero, and simply just because he wanted to get back, you know, and it's just one of them things with fighters, man. They it's crazy. B Hop has he had a, a a couple of fights that you just the fight against Tarva, the fight against um Kelly Pavlik and and uh Tito. Yeah. Those were three fights that you just didn't see him going that way. Yeah. So hey, true story. I fell asleep. So I used to spar with Kelly back home in Ohio. I fell asleep during the undercard fights, and they woke me up right before the main event, Kelly and, and Bernard, right? And so right after the first round ended, and I'm, I'm a kid at this point in time, and I'm you know, it's a bunch of grown men in the room, and I'm a kid, and I looked up at my dad, and I said, and I, and I said it loud so that everybody could hear it. I said, if Kelly fight like that, he going to lose. And at this point in time, Kelly was like at his, he was at his top. Yeah. And so and so my dad laughed at me and he was like, Man, you you sleep talking. What do you what are you talk? I said, I know what I'm talking about. If Kelly fight like that, he gonna lose. 
And I saw really quickly what I was able to do with Kelly because I was an amateur fighter. I was able mm. to do this with Kelly for two, three rounds. I couldn't do this with Kelly for six, seven rounds. He would always catch up to me with the body work and slow yeah. me down. The first round when Bernard moved against Kelly the way that he did, I said, yo, if he fight like that, he going to lose. I knew a grown man could do what I was, what I was able to do for a couple mm -hmm. of rounds. If a grown man did it, it was no way you was going to catch up to him and beat him, you know? And so that's how that fight ended up going. Yeah. Totally outclassed him. Yeah. You said sparring. Um, what do you think about, uh, you know, they them releasing the, the tapes with uh, Tank and... And Devin Haney. Y'all talked about that yet? You ain't been watching the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wasn't here, but we could talk about it. I didn't I didn't I didn't like that. Um I, I it's like it's unspoken, but it's just something that you just don't do. A lot of times now, especially since camera phone phones then came out with the cameras on them, nobody holds their phones up during sperm. If a phone is being held up during talk about this. I'm huh? sorry, because you said something about... I did hear you talk about this, because you said something about when you spar Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so but how important is sparring, though? Because appreciate you for, people for, feel like, oh, man, I was sparring, I was working on stuff. That don't mean nothing. But if people have Because people you, don't understand that. Yeah. People don't understand that. So the, even, the, even when you look at you say, he was 17. Like, it's like, so what? He was 17. He was this. He was that. You make all these, you know, the conversation just goes so much further. So that's why you don't hold a camera up in sparring. And if the camera is being held up, you make sure that there's a mutual understanding and respect that goes along with it and that it doesn't get released. You know, um, I've had a, a couple of, of sessions that have gotten released and I laugh at it. My dad gets pissed every time he's seen something come out. But I laugh at it because of what you just said. I'm working on something. Or certain yeah. things I'm just simply not doing. But the outsiders don't understand that. And they get it They get it misunderstood, you know? Yeah, and if you got a fight coming up, you definitely want a good sparring partner. Somebody that's going to prepare you for your real fight. Yeah. So if they have success on you, that's kind of a good thing, isn't it? Um. No. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. To a degree, um, I was the kind of guy that, in the beginning of a of a training camp, I was probably seventy percent. Near the end of the camp, I was ninety ninety five percent. You know, so there were things that guys were successful with early in the camp, and it was pushing me, getting me going, getting me ready. And we knew that if you weren't able to capitalize the way you were early in camp. SP on his P's and Q's. He's making it do, you know, making it do what it do. And, yeah. you know, so that's that's also, you know, when you're able to gauge having a good sparring session with someone and you're able to look at how the sparring went later on in camp, you're able to look at the things you've improved on and and, and those sort of things. So, yeah, you're right from that perspective. Yeah. yeah. That's sparring tape out there where a guy look like he's knocking you from pillar to post. Young kid, <laughs> you gotta take it back. Young kid, <laughs> but you literally just working on the <laughs> what? Hey, <laughs> what? Hey, nah, I've been trying, I've been working on getting some commentary gigs going for me and Ant. If you ever say pillar to post, I'm muting him the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if you ever talk over a, a highlight reel and say, Look, he was getting them from pillar to post. <laughs> Okay, cut. <laughs> You're done. No, I'm You're saying done. there is a tape out there with you and Haney where you literally just working on defense. Uh -huh. But it yeah. looked like he just working, Sean. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm like, and people are like, man, look, Sean ain't even that good. I said, bro, if you look, Sean's not even. I think you like, you do a little bit of work. But I think it's gonna do two things. I uh -huh. think number one, it's it's also helping with the profile of the fight. Oh, yeah, builds the fight. And when people, when you look at him at 17, and what a lot of people expect him to do against uh, against Ryan Garcia, if he in fact does that, we, what he just did against Regis Progre, he can do two things. He can look at 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 Ryan and see, see, I told you I ain't no joke. I told you I ain't that seventeen year old. And now he can look at Tank and say, guess what? I ain't that seventeen yeah. year old no more. Let's go. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think this might actually help Devin yeah. and his dad moving forward in the sport. Well, you know, Devin is down to fight anybody, it seems. Mm -hmm. Tank, you know, he, he's talking about people being the draw and who's who's worth having to fight with, who deserves the fight. And then you fight Frank Martin, who is a, 
you know, a promising talent. That's a good and fight now. That's a good it's fight. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. But does he deserve it? And is Frank Martin a draw? He's not. Frank Martin is not a draw. Not a draw. He's not. not a and draw. So you want to say you want to talk about the numbers that Sha- that Shakur is doing and the numbers that Devin doing, and do you bring somebody that's never even headlined a fight before? <laughs> but he feel like he can carry the card because I'm tank. Yeah, he can carry the card against anybody though. Yeah. You, but don't say that somebody doesn't deserve the fight because they don't have the numbers. You know, we know you're the A side no matter who you fight. Mm-hmm. We know that. But you could fight Devin Haney and do a 60 40 split or a 65 35. And same thing with Shakur. Everybody is just about that money these days. And it's unfortunate because everybody can get paid. Kind of goes back to what Ann said about me. You're talking 60 yeah. 40 splits, so on and so forth. For me, my thing was how much money are we making? What's my guarantee? What's my purse guarantee? Mm-hmm. And if that's what makes sense at this point in time for this this level, so on and so forth, let's do it, you know? And I think a lot, like to your point, a lot of fighters are more so focused on, even when the number is big, I need yeah. that 60 to go from 60 to being 50. And it's like, what? I need that 60 to go from being 60 to being 70. What? I ain't mad at you. Get your money, but <laughs> Get, yeah. Yeah. But, you, but, but at the same time, not only are you preventing the fans from getting what they want, yeah. you're also preventing um, this sport from, from, from getting to a level that it should be at. And you, and you prevent people from seeing, you're keeping yourself safe. You're keeping yourself out of seeing people seeing you in, in a hard fight. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to ask you, you two with this. Uh, you know, we always want to see those. There's so much talent at 140 with all those top guys. Tank is who Tank is. And slowly but surely, is Haney and Tank pulling themselves away from Shakur, T.O., and all those guys? And literally, they set up to meet? I think Tank already did that. I think Devin is, is basically on his, way, on oh, his yeah. way to doing that. And they and just leaving those guys. The reason being, though, is you know Shakur having an off night. And then, um, and then of course, being being with top rank, T.O. having a couple of off nights. Mm-hmm. You're right. Like like I said, we had this conversation before. Four, three or four years ago, it was like, who's the best? Who's the best? And now it's like, slowly but surely. But it's the way the world turns, you know? They're supposed to separate themselves. And two are supposed to come out. And then one out of the two. So I think right now, it's Devin Haney and Tank Davis. I think the talent is still comparable. I think when it comes to popularity, um, of course, Haney and Tank are, are separating themselves from the other two, and they mm-hmm. are going to be the the A side fighting against anybody else. But I still think the talent is there for To. To need uh, he needs somebody that's trying to engage with him to have a, a really yeah. good fight. If somebody tries to really box and smart, like we saw in the last fight, but I still, me and Sean still felt like he won the fight. Um, and uh, Shakur... Don't say me and Sean. Me and Ant. No, no, no. Me and you said that T.O. won the fight. Ant said that he lost the fight. Yeah, I, thought, I uh, never I, said I, he I, won I, the fight. Please. T.O.? Yeah. We was talking about it at the fight. You said you had him winning. Never said I had him winning. I'll pull up the text messages. We was talking through the whole, through the whole fight, round by round. You said you had him winning. I might have been talking to you thinking I was talking to somebody else. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, I definitely, yeah. Uh, you know, or the very funny part is I might have been talking about uh, Jermaine and you, and yeah, you might have been that, thinking that I was talking about Tia. That happens. <laughs> I just felt like, um, well, I mean, that, that fight's old, but I, I feel like Shakur has the most talent out of mm-hmm. out of the four. Uh, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, we just don't know. It's it's unfortunate that we judging him off of one fight, yeah. but it's just like he don't want to. Sometimes he don't want to engage. He seems like he's afraid to take a shot, and um, when he fight those guys, he's gonna have to. I, I feel like he'll engage more against Haney. I think he's gonna like really be on the defense against Tank. Yeah, yeah. I think he needs to just. I think he had a moment where he could have accepted a real low ball from Haney. Yeah, you gotta accept that just to get in there, just to play it ball. It was twenty five percent, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but you, yeah, it's something crazy. But you just gotta get in there. Nah, when they oh. holding you out like this, because you're getting blackballed damn near. Twenty five percent. I think he could have. He should have tried to negotiate the thirty. Yeah, he might have negotiate the thirty, and and that would have been fine. If you calling this dude out, 
and you want it so bad, go ahead and take that risk. What was Sean? What was the the split when uh, Mayweather fought De La Hoya? No clue, but I know uh, that I know uh, Floyd was on the bottom half of that. Yeah, I know he was too. But I yeah. want to know how low was it? But know. we know that he took that fight because he knew it was going to change his life. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I felt like he definitely should. When that mo- he had, it was like a a weak window maybe. Yeah, and I feel like he missed that window of fighting Haney, and it was just hasn't really sparked his career since that. I feel like that's a part of the game that needs to change. You know, when you can give these fighters all of the business, uh-huh. like with Shakur. Uh, having to make a decision whether or not he's going to fight Haney and the, the 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 percentage split and all that, you got to break it all the way down to the fighter and show him what's in front of him and allow him to make the decision. Yeah. Instead of just saying, nah, that's a low number, we can't do it. Like, ba- tell me exactly what I'm giving then what, up. What can we do after this? And tell me what can happen yeah. after this. Yeah. Don't just make the, straight up make the decision because it doesn't make sense for you. The or, team. Or, yeah, something like that. I think people need to start breaking it all the way down to these fighters and letting these fighters see what's in front of me now and what's beyond me later. Mm-hmm. You know right. what I mean? And I think that, you know, again, man, we all being a little too safe in this ring. And if you take 25% and it's still your highest payday, then, you know, you got to make it make sense, man. And then you make everybody come to you, especially if you are who you say you are, you think you are, you know mm-hmm. you're going to win, then you make everybody come to you. That That yeah. used to be the conversation. We win the ba- the belts, and then we win the belt, then we control the game. Mm. Yeah, that used to be the conversation. Mm. That definitely was. I'm that generation where we just gotta get a belt. Once I get the belt, then I control the conversation. Mm. You know what I mean? And so fighters gotta get back to that real quick. Hey, give us your thoughts on Canelo versus Munguia. Uh, I gotta imagine you not you're not too happy about him not fighting uh, um, David Benavidez, but you know, give us your thoughts. Um. I want to say I don't want to see it, but I do want to see it because Jaime Munguia is not a chump. Uh, he had a great performance against John Ryder, who gave Canelo a little bit of problems. Um, well, he, uh, he he went the distance. It was uh it, it wasn't like a, a shutout, but that's not who we want to see. And if this was the fight before the fight, then I would say, all right, cool. But <laughs> I don't think he's gonna fight David Benavides at all. I don't think he's gonna fight him. I don't either. Man. I, I've been, I'm on record. You know, I'm on record. <laughs> I, 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 it's funny because it's like, I'm trying not to accept that it's not going to happen. But every month, move by in boxing, it's like, well, you probably fight Berlinga next. It's like, bro, you you moving farther and farther away from uh, Dave Benavides. Then David say, I'm going to cruise, I mean, to 175. Mm-hmm. It's just a uh, McGee fight. Go ahead. He should go to 175 because there's some some great talent up there yeah. um, with Bivol yeah. and um, Better Beef. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the timing for two fighters right now that I feel has not been fruitful for the timing for Boots Ennis and the timing for David Benavidez. Mm. Both of these guys have come around mm. where they're such athletically gifted and talented and juggernauts in their weight class. That we really won't see them con- challenged against anyone, and almost for the sake of it'll be like, kind of like he was here, but who did he do it against? It's nobody for him to do it against. There's nobody that's really Benavidez has run out of options. He's he's molly whopped everybody he's been in the ring with, and now going up to 175, we'll see. I think we'll see true competition at 175, but his natural his his weight class 168. Where I think a bulk of his career should and could be, there's no nothing else there. And on He's top of that, the, the names that he fought when he fought them, they're to the world, they're not big names. To the boxing world, we're like, yo, that, was, that dude, yeah. that dude fast. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's Caleb Plant, it's Anthony Durrell, and you know, Boo-boo. um, and Boo Boo Andre. And he made it look like nothing against all three of those guys, man. Yeah. Well, so, and we already know about Boots. So, okay, so Boots here, this is how I feel about Boots. I feel like I feel like Canelo's ducking Benavidez. I don't think Crawford is ducking Boots. I think Crawford wants to move up and wait, which he should. And Boots is just going to have to wait for those guys at 140 to come up if he's going to stay there that long. Yeah. Because there's a lot of competition. I mean, Devin Haney can come up. 
Tio, all those guys can come up and um, those will be some big fights for him. It's just, is he going to stay there long enough? Mm -hmm. yeah. I say he should. He should go ahead and rule that division for, uh, you know, a nice five years and wait for some competition to come up because who's at 154? I mean, he go he can go up and fight Zoo or somebody like that. You got Spence, think, Charlo. Maybe yeah, Charlo. Yeah, uh, Charlo's done. Yeah, Spence. And I think, I think Crawford, um, <laughs> I think he might skip 154 altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Crawford is uh, building his way to a Canelo fight. That's yeah, what clearly. I think. If that fight is true about him fighting uh, Conor, Conor Ben. Uh, uh, Chris Eubanks. Chris, I'm sorry. You good. Chris Eubanks Jr., yeah. Oh, so he went yeah. from... Yeah. He went from fighting... Uh, um, Who? The one young kid to fight another UK guy? Who? Terrence? Conor Ben. No, Terrence, Terrence. Terrence went from fighting Conor Ben to now Oh, fighting... Conor Ben was a... Well, no, that Connor, was a mistake. It was a mistake. Was a mistake. Connor Ben is oh. fighting somebody else. Dude. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. Terrence talking about fighting uh, Chris Eubanks oh, at yeah. one sixty. Okay. So I'm thinking that's building his way up to fight, get the Canelo fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a solid fight for him to go up and wait. Yeah, I, I think he'll win. Probably knock him out, and then uh, he'll go one more weight class to fight Canelo. But I think Canelo. They said Canelo might fight uh, Jamal Charlo in September after this fight. That's sound about right. If that happens, you gotta get Charlo back in the ring. You gotta get him back in the ring um, before summer, and he's gotta look. He gotta look like a true threat. If he doesn't look like a threat, nobody's gonna want to see it. Uh, I think that that's a. That, I'm a record. I felt like it was gonna be both Charlos, and then we wasn't gonna get Benavidez. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that's that's really what 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 uh, what Canelo's aiming for. Fighters that he he's gonna look good against, fighters that he's gonna make money against, and fighters with good good records that mm -hmm. um that but aren't gonna pose a true the truest threat to him and Benavidez is just that. Do you think Munguia has a chance? No, I think Munguia is gonna get knocked out in about six or seven rounds. Munguia wow. lacks defense. Lacks defense. But he's he's young. Too he's young. young. Yeah. Too young. And that and 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 I'll say this, and then we'll probably wrap up with this. I feel like you know a lot of people have been saying this ever since Canelo fought uh, Mayweather. He's taking pages out of Mayweather's book. We can see him moving now. We see a little shoulder roll here and there. We see more speed from him. All these other things that's in the ring, and then outside of the ring, we can see him taking pages out of out of Canelo uh, out of uh, Mayweather's book in terms of how he's orchestrating his career who he's picking to fight, where he's picking to fight him, and the list goes on. And really, I think he chose to he, – he didn't pick Benavidez soon enough. He should have picked Benavidez four or five years ago. Got him out of the way. It's too late now. Yeah. Just like Mayweather did him. So. Well, yeah. Mayweather was – they said Canelo wasn't ready after he got, you know, washed. Yeah, so you should have right? got him early, like you should. He should have got Benavidez early, like Mayweather got. Yeah, him early. yeah. exactly. He should have okay. got Benavidez four or five years ago, at least. Mm -hmm. The way the way Mayweather got Canelo, he wasn't at one sixty eight yet, though. Should have went up to sixty eight. <laughs> Floyd, mm -hmm. Floyd, Floyd had enough enough wherewithal to know who he was coming. Fifty four, but but to know who was coming mm -hmm. and when they were coming, you mm -hmm. know. And so he knocked he knocked Canelo off the off the horse. Well before he became who he became. Yeah. I saw your, your take on uh Mayweather not being able to beat Tommy Hearns. Man, I, I I it's hard to see Mayweather beating beating Tommy, especially like money, money wet Mayweather. Floor, uh uh Tommy is not the kind of guy that you can allow to to come in on you. That's a lot. That's a lot coming in yeah. on you. So what'd you think about that? I I didn't agree. Okay. I don't think anybody can beat Mayweather of any generation. Woo! I, I, I don't I, think he can be I, beat because just, just off the IQ. The listen, IQ, man. man. Hey, listen. Now, we saw what an older Shane Mosley did. What about a younger Shane Mosley? What about what younger Floyd? Younger Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, I hate when people say that. <laughs> I hate when people say that about Manny. Okay, Floyd <laughs> goes back and whoop Manny ass too. He might stop Manny. Yeah, so... Mayweather, I hate say that. Young, young and Floyd might, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane Mosley always been an out of control fighter, right? He had power and speed. He was good, but you see the way Vernon Forrest whipped his ass twice. Yeah, in his prime. Yeah, 
in his prime and really whipped his ass. Yeah. And I think that, you know, Mosley got that one punch. And two, they two. said it. If you, watch, if you watch the uh, 24-7, um, what's his trainer name? The Naeem Richardson. <laughs> Nah. I'm a, I, 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 I mix this name together. <laughs> yeah, he like he said he said Mosley gonna come out and he gonna he gonna hit him hard. He's gonna put that pressure on him. And then I think Mayweather gonna grow fangs and then he gonna fight back. I mean that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. And if if uh Floyd would have you know, you know, once some hands got real bad, he wasn't pressuring nobody. Everything was, yeah. you know, pot shot, he gonna catch you with a one, two here and there, he's gonna make you look stupid. And that's what he did. They said Shane had Jericho Juice on his back after after that fight from all those <laughs> those jabs he was taking. Oh man! Hey hey, one, one quick one before y'all get out of here. I know y'all saying wait, have Boots waited out for the young guys to come up. That could be a three to five year wait. Boots is a big one forty seven. So now nah, I'm saying go to one fifty four because I got Charlo, Spence, Castano, Thurman, Lubin, Tim, Fandora, Mendoza. And oh, Ramos, it's a lot in there. He got that's money. Go get money. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think uh, a great comeback fight for Earl Spence would be against Boots at one fifty four. Damn, why you going <sighs> He he got to gain confidence. <laughs> Who Earl Spence? Yes, he don't got so the he, confidence right now. He should take a, a bum on his first fight yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let somebody beat you like that. <laughs> you know what? He may not. You think he gonna fight again? Damn, you, yes. You don't think Earl fighting again? I don't know. Damn. I didn't, but I, I think I just saw like a clip of him training not too long ago. Oh, it was a point that Sean Porter I thought Earl Smith was done? Yeah, absolutely. Damn. Absolutely. And and for reasons beyond, so like with, with Charlo, my thing with, with Jamel Charlo is you fought so bad that nobody wants to see you again. The thing with, with, with um, Earl is... I'm your health is, is your health at the at is your health like I hate to put a percentage on it and it's like psh, if your health ain't a hundred percent you shouldn't be in the ring but you know what I mean like how bad is your health and that that was my after reason after that beating after the fight okay <laughs> after the fight on top of a car wreck that was just uh unreal hey on, on top of let's not remember the first time he ever took punishment was against you yeah I've never even seen Earl damaged. I'm like, how the hell has Sean got a knot on his eye? <laughs> I don't think he's there psychologically. I think he can come back physically. I think psychologically he may be damaged too much to uh, to really compete again. We'll see. He'll probably test himself to fight one more fight again and see how he feels. And after that, then maybe the confidence will grow, like you said. And but who does he fight? Is yeah, this I... the time where he fight Keith Thurman? Finally. Yeah, I know. Just I, it, when you lose like that, I can never watch my fight like that. That's a lot like um, that right there of uh, Thurman and Spence fighting is a lot like um, when uh, when Bernard and Roy finally had their rematch years and years later. Oh. It made sense for them, and 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 we're gonna pay for it, but it really. Yeah. And in retrospect, it won't make a lot of sense, like from for the business of the accolades and and who's conquering the division and all that. But that fight will actually still make sense for them, and I think it could make sense for the boxing world as well, for in some ways. If Keith beats Tim Zhu, then you know that could be a, a rebirth of his career if he wants to yeah. become active again. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's L- a big if. You don't know. Listen, uh, everybody said I'll be booting our guest off, and I hate doing that. But a lot like Cam, man, you got your daughter waiting on you. You just got home. I gotta let you go, big dog. But I want to thank you for for joining the podcast yet again and, and cooling with us much longer than usual. Always, bro. I get up with y'all soon. Have All a right. good one, man. Send me that song too. All right. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll let you listen to it. All right, now. All right, now. <laughs> Let's get out of here, man. I hope you guys yeah, enjoyed man. the show today. Appreciate Nah for coming on. Listen, man, that's one of a lot of comedians we could have on the show. Yeah. We had Scruncher yeah, in here just last that. week. We've had uh, comedian Pierre on the show. Earthquake. We've had Earthquake on the show. 
we're going to keep rolling them in, these actors, these comedians, these uh, sports stars. Just letting y'all, sh- I want to show y'all how far boxing reaches. I'm sure you, you guys on should know by now, but yeah, we got to get, we definitely got, they come in, we got to, we got to yeah, make sure yeah. we got them, get them on the show when they come in. But um, well, thank you guys for, for always tuning in to the podcast. Join our Patreon, subscribe, patreon.com forward slash TPWP. There's an app, download the app, TPWP. There's a, a tier on there for you. Don't want you guys to miss what's coming on. And now we're going to do a watch back of my fight against yeah. uh, Danny Garcia. <clears throat> Hopefully this coming week and it'll be yeah. on there. Um, as Ant said, uh, there's much more that we can we can narrate yeah. um, that, that you guys aren't privy to. So the only way you can see that is on the Patreon. I don't want you to miss all of the good stuff we got coming to the Patreon. Um, I want to shout out Game Changers uh, Sports Academy. I'm up there on Saturdays. Um, we'll, we'll make sure we put the address in there. You got a son. You want to do it yourself. Got a daughter. Anybody who wants to train, uh, come on in. I'm training. Um, just giving what was given to me. It's like I like to say, bringing a taste of Cleveland to Las Vegas. And I'm doing that on the weekends. They're also in there Tuesdays and Thursdays, 4 o'clock p.m. Um, I come in there on Tuesdays and Thursdays as well. Uh, so I want you guys to just uh, keep tuning in, keep checking us out. And uh, when y'all in Vegas... Try to find this. And find I think him. It, won't be able to find yeah, him. it's uh one one twenty five a month to go up there and train. Okay. Hey, if you're in Vegas, you got a kid, I got too much on your kid free. There you go. There on Ant. There you go. Love that. Hey, hey, you appreciate kid. you, big dog, for yeah. always giving back. Yeah, no, no problem. I hey, just hit me up, hit my DM, uh it's on Instagram, Ant with two T's, 702. Uh just hit me up, whatever. Go down there. Go talk to Sean. Tell Sean, uh, I'm here for at sponsorship, and I got you. Hey, listen. And it better be a kid. I ain't sponsoring no grown ass man. Okay. <laughs> hey, you gonna use somebody gonna bring twins? Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, man. If you got twins, don't bring a bunch of kids, man. I, this is for one kid. Yeah. There's so much stuff you gotta say and stuff like this. <laughs> right. Listen, motivational message before we get out of here. Uh, I had an opportunity to hang out with uh, someone who I now consider to be a mentor of mine about. 60, about about 50 years in the acting game, uh, mm. Oba uh, Babatundi. Uh, you guys, if you don't recognize the name, type that in and, and search him up, man. Look at his catalog. Long as heck. Um, I've had an opportunity to meet, to make a lot of friends, and I consider him to be a great friend. We had lunch the other day, <clears throat> and he gave this to me. I'm giving it to y'all for free, um, and I may or may not go into it. Listen, he said, it's not... It's not, it's not how long you've been alive. It's how long you've been paying attention. Mm-hmm. And um, when he said that to me, I said, man, I've been paying attention for a long, a long time. I pay attention to everything. So I'm just using that to say this, man. Pay attention to everything. I know the last time you were in here, we talked about being aware. This week, we're talking about paying attention. And it ain't about how old you are. It ain't about you being um, a, a father. It ain't about you being uh, a sister, anything like that. It ain't about what you got. It's about how long you've been paying attention. If you've been paying attention and you've been really been watching, you've been learning. And if you've been learning, that means you, you, you're living a good, successful life. If you ain't successful, <laughs> if you're struggling, just start paying attention. All right? It ain't about how old you are. It's about how long you've been paying attention. This is the portal way. Stay blessed.